Hey everyone, in this video we're going to show you how to get started with HTTP Console, a fully managed service managed to discover and securely connect any service. In order to get started, there's three steps that you need to do. First thing you need to do is create an HTTP Console cluster. You can do that from the UI with the click of a button, or you could use a Terraform provider. Next, you're going to need to connect your HVN to your existing AWS environment. And last, you're going to need to deploy your console clients to be able to start discovering and securely connecting your services. In this video, we're going to show you how to peer your network. We're going to show you how to deploy a client into your AWS environment. And we're going to show you what it's like to install an application on Kubernetes. Let's get started with a quick overview of the HTTP UI. I'm here on the HashiCorp Cloud Platform UI. And as you can see, I have the options for console involved, as well as a link out to the HTTP Terraform provider documentation. Everything I'm showing you today can be done using the Terraform provider, but we'll stay in the UI for now. You'll notice that I have two options available. I can either view my console cluster or I can deploy console. The reason I have this is because I've already deployed a console cluster. Uh, if you don't, you're gonna wanna click on the deploy console to get started. When you do that, you're gonna see I have a number of different options. I can create my console cluster so I can give it a cluster ID. These need to be unique for each of the different clusters that I have. I can choose the tier that I want, development for testing, standard and plus for production environments. I can choose my HVN or I can create a new one. I can enable a public endpoint for being able to access my UI. And I can choose the cluster size and the version. I only have one cluster size option here because I'm on development. Once, I've done, once I'm done configuring everything, I click on the create cluster button and this will take about 10 minutes to complete. Once the creation of your cluster has been completed, you'll be able to see all your clusters from that link that I showed you on the previous screen where it said to view your console clusters. Here we'll have a list of all the ones that you have deployed within your account, as well as the ability to create a new cluster if you need another one. When I click into a cluster, you're gonna notice some familiar steps from the beginning of this video. We have the create, which was when we created our console cluster, Connect, which was the second step for peering our VPCs. I've gone ahead and done this, but we'll show you how to do it here in a second. And then three is deploy your console clients. For that, you're gonna need some admin tokens and client configurations. All of this is available for you to get started. And if you need some help, we have some learn more tutorials down at the bottom here. So now let's talk about how to connect our HashiCorp Virtual Network or HVN to an AWS Virtual Private Cloud or VPC. As I mentioned before, I've already gone ahead and completed this step. If I hadn't, I wouldn't have a checkbox next to where it says connect here. And there would be a button asking me to complete this step in order to move forward. There are two different options that you have for connecting a VPC. You can do a direct peering connection, or you can use a transit gateway attachment. A direct peering connection is good if you're planning to only connect one VPC to your HTTP account. If you plan on connecting multiple VPCs to your console cluster, I'd recommend using a transit gateway attachment. When I click on the link for a peering connection, I'm brought to this screen. Here I'm gonna provide the information necessary to create the request to my AWS account. The things I'm gonna to need to provide are connection ID, so what's the name of this connection going to be? I need to provide my account ID for the AWS account where this connection is going to take place. I need to provide the VPC ID of the VPC I plan to connect to, and I need to stipulate the region that I'm gonna be connecting to. Once you've completed this and hit Create Connection, you'll wanna go into the VPC dashboard on your AWS con console, and you're gonna to wanna to go to the Peering Connection screen and accept it. As you can see, I've already done that, and that's why we have an active connection. If you'd like more information about why you need to establish this connection, I recommend checking out the Why Do I Need to Connect video that's linked from the overview page of your console cluster. Once I've accepted the peering connection from my AWS account, I'm gonna to wanna to finish configuring it from my HTTP portal. When I create the connection, it's gonna appear here in the peering connections tab. If I had done a transit gateway attachment, it would be here. When you click into the peering connection, which is now showing active because we've accepted it, it's going to tell you that you need to configure your security groups and your route table. The reason that we need to do this is that in order to deploy a console client into my AWS environment, I have to make sure that I have the necessary permissions for my VPC to communicate with the console servers. You can pull this information from your AWS account and you can use either the terminal or the web console to finish setting this up. 
One last thing before we get started here, you'll notice that there are actually two warnings. I have to configure my security groups in my route table like we just discussed. I also have to create a route. This is how we establish the connectivity between our HVN and our VPC. If I click on create route, what this is gonna ask me to do is name a route ID. We'll name it PCM cluster. And I have to say to the destination cider block that this is gonna be going to, which is the 192.168.0.0/16. Then I hit create route. This is a necessary step that we have to make sure that we do in order to effectively ensure that our clients and our servers can communicate with one another. Now that we've established our peering connection, we're ready to deploy our console clients. In this example, I'm gonna show you how I deployed console clients onto an EKS cluster. If you're planning on deploying console to EC2, or you'd like to see a step-by-step -step guide of exactly what I'm doing here, I recommend clicking on the deploy clients button. That'll give you links out directly to our learn guides that can help you in this process. For this install, I used Helm. And so in order for me to be able to do this, there's a couple things I need to gather ahead of time. One of the first things I'm gonna to need to do is create what's called the bootstrap token. The bootstrap token I can get by generating an admin token with this button here. For my client configuration, I need to download this file because there's some additional values that I need from here that I'm gonna show you on the Helm chart. So let's quickly flip over to the Helm chart and look at our configurations. Using console's Helm chart, I'm able to, be, to deploy my console clients onto EKS and connect them back to my HTTP console servers. Some of the values that you'll note here is that bootstrap token that I talked about where I wanted to be able to use the admin token as my bootstrap token. I have the gossip key, which is a value that I'm pulling from our client configuration. And then I also have a C8 cert that I need to generate from my console config as well. A couple of the other things you can note is we're gonna be connecting this to an external server, which is our HTTP console server. And you can use the Kubernetes auth method of the EKS environment. When I run the Helm configuration, I stipulate the values that I needed. And as you can see, we already deployed this and it says, thanks for installing console. Let's take a look at the console UI to see exactly what this looks like and verify our installation. If you remember earlier, I talked about making the network accessibility public. The reason we do this is because we need this public link in order to access the console UI. When you open up the console UI, you see we have one instance running. This is our console server. So if I were to run the production environment, I'd see three console servers instead of the one I have for development. In order to verify our installation of the nodes, I click on the nodes tab here. And as you can see, we have two nodes installed on US West 2. Now that we've verified our install, we're gonna go ahead and install our demo application to see how console works. So I'm installing a series of services that we'll see coming up online in a moment here on the console UI. So here in the console UI, we see a number of services now. So we have our front end, our back end, Postgres, Vacation API. At its basic, this is what we mean by console service discovery. These are applications that are registered in Kubernetes that I'm now able to discover in the console UI. If I click on one of these services, you'll see I can actually see my back end talking to my front end, my Vacations API talking to my front end. The reason that this is working is because I've already set up intentions. If you click on the intentions, as you can see, I have my back end able to talk to my front end. I have my front end being able to talk to my back end. These are not enabled by default. I can actually use like the CRD within console to be able to establish these. So if I had deployed this without these intentions, this would not have been able to work. Our CRDs include a number of different capabilities, including things like service splitters. So if I wanted to split between multiple different services, it includes service resolvers if I wanted to have failover. If you're interested in learning more about what we can do with our CRDs in Kubernetes, I recommend going to our docs at console.io. This has been a high level overview of how to get started with console. I hope you found it informative. If you need additional information, make sure you go to learn.hashicorp.com. Thanks a lot and happy connecting.